Oh my god, it's been a long time since I've done anything Game Maker related, and uh, I have some excuses for that, but I'll save them for like the video description or something. Alright, hello all you crazy people out there, this is Dragonite Spam, and welcome to how to uh, reconfigure all of your controls for your game the painless way. So, um, I have here, as I usually do when I make these examples, I have this uh, NPC dialogue text thing that I made a long time ago, like two years ago now, and... I'm just going to be using this as an example game on how to go and uh, change the controls for the game. And let's see, over here in the player's step event is where the movement goes on. And uh, for a brief rundown, there's a switch statement that checks for uh, A, S, D, and W, whichever order I said those, for up, down, left, and right. Uh, what if you wanted to change these? What if you decided that you had all this done, you didn't want to use W, S, D, you wanted to use the arrow keys? Uh, you could go, get rid of this, and say, what's A? A is going to be a virtual key left, and D is going to be right, and S is going to be up, and S is going to be down, rather, and W is going to be up. And that wouldn't be too bad here, but if you have any game project that's any bigger than this, and you have anywhere that's checking for keyboard input, like, more than once in your game, uh, you're probably not going to want to go and search through the entire project file looking for all of those instances. So what you could do is instead of saying check for specifically uh, the left key or check specifically for WASD, or you could say check for a certain variable, and I'm going to call it control uh, left, and I'm going to change a D to control right. So instead of any specific letters on the keyboard or any specific arrow keys, you just have the button for left, the button for right, the button for down, and the button for up. And these don't do anything because they haven't been assigned a variable yet, and I'm going to go and do that next. So I'm going to say in the player's create event, for lack of better places to do this, control left is going to equal virtual key left. Right, likewise, is going to be... Alright, so I have left, right, up, and down. And the important thing here is that these variables, these values, vk left, vk right, vk up, and vk down, as well as anything like an uh, ordinal of D or whatever. These are just numbers. These are stored in, these are a number of stored in variables just like any other variable in GameMaker, any other constant built-in value in GameMaker. Um, if you were to show a message not plus sign, if you were to show a message D or show a message uh, like left or something like that, show a message of left, I really should not be trusted to talk and type at the same time. Anyway, if you were to do these uh, when the game starts up, you would see that the letter D and the left arrow key are uh, simply numbers that are stored in these values. This function will actually come up in other places in programming if you're uh, doing things like complicated string manipulation, but I'm not going to get into that now. Anyway, the main idea, the important part is that you can store them in variables, you can use the set variables for uh, checking functions like keyboard input or the switch statement over here or anything like that. And if I were to run the game again, because I closed out of it, because I wasn't thinking. Uh, even though I haven't told the game to specifically check for any of the arrow keys in the game, it's still going to work, because uh, control left, control right, control up, and control down, uh, those have all been defined, in this case, to, uh, to account for the arrow keys. If I wanted to, I could change these back to the WASD letters which is probably what most people are more comfortably using when it comes to walking around in, um, in computer games. And I, it comes, it occurs to me that I kind of wish I had like a camera pointed at my keyboard so you could see me actually pressing the different keys, but uh, take my word for it. I'm not doing any like fancy dark magic over here. Um, <clears throat> the other thing is in the NPC event, this is in the actual space press event. I should probably change that. Let's see, so I'm just going to real quickly take this and move it into the step event, and I'm going to actually use one of the uh, the functions for checking for keyboard input. Alright, that looks better, so when you press the space key, uh, once again, you can take this, and you can stick that in a variable, uh, and you can call control interact, and you can pass it to this keyboard check press function, and for the sake of keeping everything grouped together, I am actually going to go and uh, define this in the player's create event as well, so it's going to be the control variables in my case are going to be uh, all belonging to the player. Uh, if you wanted to, you can make them global, you could make some like persistent global control commander object if you wanted to, and you could stick them in there. Uh, but I'm just going to use the player here, and uh, that is not the player's create event, that is the NPC's create event, and 
uh, we're going to define control interact as the spacebar. And <clears throat> let's, let's get out of there. Let's run the game again. And uh, once again, as before, even though I have not told the game to specifically check for the space key in the NPC over here, um, it knows to do that. It knows it is supposed to look for that because that is what is in the player's uh, control interact variable. And that's pretty much it. So now anytime you ever want to change any keyboard input in your game, it doesn't matter if you have 500,000 objects that all do something that look for input from the player. Uh, all you have to do is change these variables once and uh, they will act over the entire program. I'm not going to get into the whole business of designing a fancy user interface that looks pretty and the game asks the player exactly what controls they want to use for, um, for any given operation. I might make a video on that later. It is kind of fun just to design user interfaces sometimes. If anybody is interested in that just for fun, let me know and I'll probably do it. But for now, that is it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Recount and subscribe, watch some of the stuff I have uploaded, and I will see you all later.